Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're having a good day. Today we're going back to the nether and we're going to do some exploring. In the last episode we managed to make our first entrance into the nether and found ourselves in a crimson forest biome where we've been making a little bit of headway exploring the local landscape and finding a way between this portal and the other portal that we made over at the jungle so we can use it for fast travel. Today we're going to be looking a little bit further afield and getting attacked by piglins because I forgot to put my gold helmet on. There you go. So piglin attacks aren't the worst thing in the world. It's mostly a problem if you get absolutely swarmed by them. The other mobs of course are still something you need to watch out for. And you need to watch out for environmental hazards as well because no water bucket is going to save you from a fall in the nether. Water when placed in the nether instantly evaporates into steam, meaning that we can't really work with water buckets to get us down from higher areas. And you'll also notice that a lot of areas of the nether, a lot of hillsides are prone to lava falls. So we need to be a little bit more careful as we're exploring here and we will probably end up keeping this splash potion of fire resistance that we traded from a piglin in the previous episode on us at all times, just in case we need to use it in an emergency. If you don't have access to those yet, you could always try getting some more gold from the overworld and bartering with piglins until you get one, but generally speaking you can avoid ending up in lava if you just keep an eye on your surroundings, so that's probably what we're going to end up doing today. So the main focus of this episode is going to be exploring a little bit, trying to find our way through the nether, find some safe passages to different biomes, and hopefully even encounter a couple of structures. Because along with all these different biomes, the nether also has structures where we can find loot and items that are necessary for the progression of the game. I think we're going to head out in this direction in our Crimson Forest, and I brought a few things with me to hopefully prevent issues like this. I brought some cobblestone from the overworld. It's a fireproof block, is nice and tough, and using cobblestone and a little bit of extra netherrack that we've gathered from the surrounding environment, we should hopefully be able to stave off the flow of giant lava falls like this. It is worth noting, however, that digging into the landscape of the nether presents a bit of a risk because there are occasional single pockets of lava sources in the walls of netherrack, so it's potentially the case that you will find yourself digging into a lava source if you're not too careful. In this case, all of this lava, all of the massive flow of lava that we can see here, has generated from a single lava source up here in the wall, which we're just going to block off with a single block of netherrack. In fact, we could probably put a block inside that little hole there so it can block that off permanently, destroying the lava source. And lava in the nether flows faster than it does in the overworld. So while lava in the overworld will flow a little bit more slowly, lava in the nether flows twice as fast and also twice as far. So lava in the overworld will only flow for about four blocks, while lava in the nether actually flows for eight. So lava in the nether has a lot more potential and is potentially a lot more dangerous. Having eliminated a big landmark like those lava falls, I'm tempted to start placing down a few more of these towers of cobblestone so I can see which way I'm going to head home and we're going to take a look out at the landscape around us. I'm going to try not to stay too close to any of these larger drops because if a hoglin sneaks up on me it could probably throw me off here into the void beyond but it looks like we're mostly okay up here. It looks like we've got a nice safe wall against our backs and we can look around from a higher vantage point to see if there's anything out there in the nether that we can spot. Our home portal down there seems to be more or less in the middle of this crimson forest biome, so I think it's probably safe to say we should branch out in different directions. And to make this slightly easier on ourselves, instead of getting hopelessly lost by navigating a different way in the nether, we might actually just dig into the nearby walls and create straightforward paths out to different biomes. So from the area where our portal is here, we could start digging through the netherrack landscape on this side and hopefully... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, that's <laughs> that's incredible. We have stumbled upon a nether fortress within a couple of blocks of our spawn portal. That is tremendous. Okay, well this changes the scope of the episode quite dramatically because this right here 
is <laughs> a terrible fortress. This is one of the locations that we are looking for as we explore the nether. The nether fortress is home to several mobs, one of which we can actually see down there at the end of the corridor. That is a blaze. Several mobs which are required for gameplay progression in Minecraft. The blazes drop blaze rods, which we will need for potion brewing and potentially for finding a stronghold if we want to go to the end and fight the ender dragon, which is not even on my radar yet. I'm not worried about that right this second, but of course that is a long-term objective for the game. And so it's going to make a lot of sense for us to both discover one of these nether fortresses and look out for blazes so that we can acquire some early blaze rods. So now that lava has been removed as a problem, we're going to step a little further into this fortress. And the fortresses are really easy to spot by the darkness of the nether brick that you see all around us. And thankfully, we haven't been ambushed by anything yet. We're going to block off the top sections of these corridors two blocks up from the ground. So leaving a two block gap that the player can easily run under, but blocking off the third block there. Because these fortresses are also home to mobs called Wither Skeletons, which are pretty dangerous to encounter if you're not familiar with them. But the first thing you need to remember is that Wither Skeletons are three blocks tall, and so they won't be able to duck under barriers like this if you place them three blocks up in a corridor. The fortress itself is made of a series of winding passages, many of which will lead to a dead end. A lot of the time these passages will generate buried in the netherrack like this, but they can also generate up on the surface. And so you'll often find that these corridors are actually parapets. They are walkways out across a lava lake or a larger expanse of terrain. Here is a good example of that where it opens out onto the terrain of this crimson forest. This is really just how nether fortresses generate and the fact that this one has decided to generate inside a large bulk of terrain means that it creates these tunnels as it goes. Over here in this direction we have the entrance to the interior of the nether fortress which you can always tell because there is this well with a lava pool in the middle. Everything beyond this, everything that reaches out like this is technically the outside of the nether fortress. And so I'm going to mark this with a couple of torches so we know that goes into the interior and right there is our first with a skeleton. It's a skeletal creature wielding a stone sword and as you can see, it will run towards you as soon as it spots you. They are very aggressive. So we're going to block off the top of this corridor here, make sure there is nothing behind us. And as you can see, the Wither Skeleton is not going to be able to get past that barrier and it's going to glitch out a little bit trying to find us. So we can very easily take it out with a sword here. The main thing to avoid with Wither Skeletons is allowing them to attack you at all because they will inflict a status effect called Wither, which is basically like poison, except it can kill you where poison will normally only leave you on half a heart of health. Further down the corridor there we saw some blazes, although they seem to have despawned or wandered off now. Blazes are a good reason to have a shield on you, because when they're at a distance they will attempt to throw fireballs in your direction. There's another wither skeleton over there, so we'd better block off this corridor and maybe we'll go up and aggro him so that he starts running towards us. Hello! And then we can retreat back to this intersection and take him out. But the blazes, the fiery mobs that we saw a little bit earlier, will fireball you from range, and so it's important to have a shield on you so you can block projectiles like fireballs if you need to. Looks like this glowstone isn't blocking anything from the rest of the tunnel, but it's a nice easy patch of glowstone to pick up, so I might as well acquire some of this now. Going back to this first intersection, we actually have staircases going up to our left and our right. I think we'll travel to the right here and see if this leads up towards another section of the fortress which might contain a blaze spawner. Yes, there we go. There is our first blaze spawner and these are mob spawners much like the cave spider ones we encountered in the abandoned mineshaft and they will frequently spawn blazes if you stand within a 16 block radius of the spawner there. These are locations at which you might want to use your splash potion of fire resistance if you're able to trade one from a piglin because blazes will inflict fire damage on the player and having them throw fireballs at you like this is potentially going to be a problem. But a couple of jumping crit attacks with a diamond sword will usually deal with the blaze easily enough and we can take out a couple of those. Luckily for us, one of them has already dropped a blaze rod, so we've already gotten ourselves the most important drop from the nether fortress. Blaze rods are required to craft potion brewing stands. They break down into blaze powder, which we can use to brew more potions, and blaze powder is also the chief ingredient in the eyes of ender 
that we need to find the stronghold in the world, so it's quite important that we gather a lot of blaze rods while we have the opportunity, although this is a fortress so close to our spawn point that we should be able to come back here anytime and get the blaze rods that we want. At this point it would also be helpful if we had the looting enchantment on our sword since that would increase the chances for these blazes to drop blaze rods, but since we're able to farm these from the spawner, even though we get set on fire occasionally, it's certainly possible that we can just fight our way through a bunch of blazes until we have enough blaze rods. Blazes will also drop a lot of XP, so as you can see we're already at level 30, but even having killed a bunch of them right now, I've only got one blaze rod. So I'm going to stand around here for a little while longer, getting hold of some blaze rods and talking about the likelihood of us finding this nether fortress in the first place, which was actually relatively slim. There are a bunch of nether fortresses out here in the nether, but a lot of the time they will be quite difficult to come across, and we are incredibly lucky that we stumbled upon this nether fortress when we did. The other structures you will find in the nether are piglin bastions, and they don't have these blaze spawners in them. They tend to be home to piglins, occasionally hoglins, and a bunch more loot. And at this stage in the game, before we've covered them in the series, it's likely that you'll want to stay away from them because there'll be a lot of piglins including some piglin brutes which are dressed in black and will attack you regardless of whether or not you are wearing gold armor. But desirable though it is to find one of these structures while you're exploring the nether, it can be quite a task getting to one for the first time since they are quite few and far between. So one of the things I think it is worth doing is looking into creating a few tunnels around the nether landscape so you know where you're going. And in the case of this fortress, we kind of stumbled upon it while making one of those tunnels. So I think exploring the nether a little bit more thoroughly is usually a good idea when you're at this stage in the game. Now, luckily, the proximity of the fortress walls here is keeping me safe from some of the hoglins that are attacking from the Crimson Forest, but it's actually worth making sure that we defend this area a little bit while we are trying to take down these blazes. So far, we're making pretty good progress, actually. We have six blaze rods now. I think I may have killed about 20 or so blazes at this point, but six blaze rods is a good start. And if we step out of the range of this spawner, you'll notice the spawner cube goes dark and it won't spawn any more blazes. They will spawn naturally in the rest of the fortress, though, and there are chances that blaze spawners will also appear in other areas of the fortress, as long as we are still in this outside section that kind of forms the, the parapets of an open fortress. I did spot a wither skeleton around the corner here, so I'm being a little bit tentative as I step around the corner, but it looks like he's wandered off in that direction, so we can always block off this area behind him here and safely explore this other staircase. It looks like that one leads up to a dead end. Okay, not to worry. So we can probably double back around and go and explore the interior area of the fortress, since we know that back in that direction we did find the lava well that indicates the entrance to the inside of the fortress because there is another very important thing we need to acquire while we're here in the nether fortress, and that is nether wart, which is an essential ingredient of potion brewing. Wow, this area is like a little hoglin reserve over here, and that one ended up hitting me through the wall. Okay, better steer well clear of those. Yeah, the hoglins could be a bit of a problem if this fortress is entirely in a crimson forest, but luckily hoglins will only spawn outside of the area of the fortress themselves, so it's unlikely that you are going to run into hoglins while exploring the nether fortress corridors. We've got a couple of nether warp blocks blocking the way here, and you'll notice that some of the foliage of the surrounding area has kind of intruded on the interior of the nether fortress, but in here we have what we wanted. There is some nether warts growing in a little garden around these staircases that lead up to the different parts of the fortress. And so we're just going to punch that to get hold of it. We're going to use a shovel to dig up the soul sand that it grows on. And this soul sand is identical to the soul sand block that you will find in soul sand valley biomes, but it doesn't typically end up with the nether wart growing on it naturally in soul sand valleys. You'll notice though that when I step down onto it, my movement speed decreases a little bit, so it's important to bear in mind if you're walking over a large area of soul sand like this, then your movement is going to be slowed down for the time being. Now, nether wart is a plant that grows very similarly to crops in the overworld. It doesn't need hydration because, of course, the nether is an environment completely devoid of water, but it can be replanted in its earlier stage just by planting the nether wart itself. And once it grows to its full height, it will end up dropping multiple nether warts for you to replant. So we can take some of this back to the overworld 
and plant it on soul sand and propagate it that way, since as long as it's on soul sand, nether wart can grow pretty much anywhere. And the other reasons to explore the nether fortress are now making themselves clear, because down here, let me quickly check the passages around us, we have a loot chest which I'm going to open up and it's got a bit of loot in it, two saddles and a gold chest plate, nothing really to write home about, in fact I might take one saddle and leave the other two items there for later. I'll put a torch by this chest to show that I have already looted it and I think we'll probably go around the corner here to where I spotted another chest lurking back here, making sure that we keep hold of some cobblestone on our hotbar just in case any of these passages have spawned wither skeletons. But no, it looks like this one leads out into the open air and you'll see that a lot of wither skeletons end up spawning on the top sections of the fortress. So we're safe from them for now. I'm going to block this off just so I don't end up rounding the corner and flinging myself out into what looks like a pretty sizable lava lake. We'll open this up, we get another saddle and some horse armor. Interesting, that's our first horse armor of the season, I think. In this one here, we have a couple of gold ingots and another saddle. So the loot in Nether Fortresses is often a bit hit or miss. It's mostly misses in this case, but the gold, of course, we can trade with some piglins if we want to do some more bartering. And it looks like the remainder of the fortress is cut off by walls of netherrack down here. So we can climb the staircase and see what's going on upstairs. I'm going to gather a little bit more netherrack just for some easy corridor blocking material because it looks like this goes off in a variety of different directions and I want to make sure that we are safe regardless of which way we go. We've got another chest around the corner here. That's got a flint and steel which is a good thing to have actually if you get stranded in the nether and your nether portal ends up getting broken by something, then it is usually a good idea to have fire starting supplies on you, which means flint and steels in nether fortresses can often be a vital piece of loot. I brought mine from the overworld though, it's in my inventory right now, so I'm always a little bit better prepared than that. But at this point the nether fortress has become a little bit more of a labyrinth. It goes off in different directions, we have staircases going downwards, staircases going upwards, and there are passages behind some of these staircases as well. Looks like these blazes have spawned out on the top of the fortress though, so we're not going to see another the blaze spawner right there and we can head off in this direction I'll probably light up some more of this area as I go that leads out to a dead end so we don't need to worry about that we could gather a little bit more nether wart if we want to but I'm going to replant most of this so that if we need to gather a little bit more of it in future if we run out of our nether wart supplies in the overworld we'll just be able to come back to this fortress and gather some it sounds like there is a hoglin hunt going on up here and it looks like this is honestly the end of our fortress, or at least the end of this corridor, and I didn't see that many other places where the fortress branches off into other spots to explore. There might be a little more over here though, and I'm hearing the sound effects of wither skeletons, although I do think most of those are on the roof right now. Yep, that way over there leads to a dead end as well, that loops back around to the rooms that we were just in, and this corridor will probably turn left here, and if we're lucky, doesn't have any wither skeletons on the inside, but those sound effects are giving me the heebie-jeebies a little bit. And here on the left-hand side, yep, it opens out into the open air. So once again, this fortress, while it's expansive and winding in its corridors, does not have a huge amount of loot to offer us. But really, we got what we wanted out of this nether fortress after all. We got the blaze rods, we got the nether warts, both of those can get us started with potion brewing, and we have the location of a blaze spawner that we can come back to and farm blaze rods from whenever we want to. I'm going to mark the direction that leads to the blaze spawner here with some torches once again, but I think it's probably a good time to head back through our nether portal and drop off these supplies in the overworld, because if we were to end up dying in unfortunate circumstances, circumstances here in the nether, there is a potential for us to lose all of that stuff that we worked so hard to get. So I think it's time to hop back through to our portal, which thankfully for me is really not that long of a trip. And here we are in the overworld. Now a couple of things have happened. As you can see, first of all, it is nighttime, so we need to go and sleep. And the second is that a piglin has wandered through our nether portal to the overworld. And the third is that it's now raining immediately after I slept too, so I'm probably going to go back to the nether just to avoid the rain. But you'll notice, yeah, a couple of piglins have wandered on through, and while these were initially most likely regular piglins, 
they have now become zombified piglins. So mobs from the nether can walk through to the overworld, and in the same way, mobs from the overworld can walk through into the nether. If a cow or a sheep around here was to wander into the nether portal there, it would end up getting transported into the other dimension and appearing at the location of our nether portal in the nether. In this case, the zombie piglins being in the world is pretty much harmless. They're going to remain neutral to us as they do in the nether. I think the other piglin has just sort of wandered off into the forest over here, and they will eventually despawn once we get a certain distance away, so we don't need to worry too much about those right now, but every so often, the portal will create a zombie piglin on its own without them actually wandering through from the nether at all. And so wherever you end up placing your nether portals, you might want to be aware that a piglin can occasionally come through. So don't put, you know, some pressure plates and TNT around the outside of your portal unless you want a piglin spawning in to just blow it up. But the notable thing here is that piglins will become zombified piglins when they enter the overworld, which means we can't bring them to the overworld and expect them to barter with us continuously. They will zombify once they get here and you can't barter at all with zombified piglins so there's really no chance of that happening. Anyway, let's hop back down into our storage room and with this chest here, which I've kind of designated for nether supplies, let's put in some of the netherrack and some of the other things that we've acquired so far. You might have noticed we also got some coal and some bones from those wither skeletons. The bones obviously dropping in the same way they do from other skeletons, but coal is kind of unique as a mob drop. We can actually farm coal this way and get renewable coal when the supplies of coal or in our immediate area have been exhausted. I'm going to put the blaze rods in here for now, but we'll do a little bit more with those in the near future. And for the moment, I think we're going to plant a small patch of soul sand out of the front of the house where where some of our other stuff is, where the uh, pumpkins and melons and things like that are growing. I do need to organize these a little bit more in future so that we have a dedicated farming area, but for now, we're just gonna make this little soul sand garden and plant the nether warts like so. And our little zombie piglin friend is inspecting the area here. And eventually we'll end up with fully grown nether wart that we can harvest. There you go, that one just grew a stage, so it shouldn't take too long, but the more nether wart you can plant, the better, in theory. We also got some pork chops and leather from the hoglins. We can smoke the pork chops so they become cooked pork chops, and we can probably put some of the loot items like the horse armor, and we'll put a bit of the leather in there. And then we're going to go back to the nether, and we're going to pretend we never found that nether fortress at all. Because I recognize that what just happened to me was incredibly lucky, and I don't expect you to have the same luck in your survival worlds. So we're going to dig around the nether until we find a convenient lava lake, and from there we're going to explore the possibilities of exploring the nether via a different mode of transportation. One thing I am going to do though very quickly is to run back and get the Unbreaking 3 and Efficiency 4 pickaxe that we enchanted in the previous episode, because that's going to help us clear out some of the nether a little bit faster. While it's all very well digging with this fortune pickaxe and it's allowing us to get a whole bunch of quartz from the quartz veins that we mine through in our tunnels here, if we switch to a pickaxe that has efficiency, a diamond pickaxe with efficiency can tear through netherrack at quite the rate. And I think you only need efficiency two or so if you want to do this with netherrack. Now it looks like this opens out into a, uh, yeah, a little bit of a ravine here. In fact, we are up in the ceiling over an area like this. This is looking a little bit treacherous. So let's back off a little way and see if we can create a kind of safer staircase down. I'll make sure to make the last couple of steps of this out of cobblestone and light them with a torch, and that way, hopefully, it should be visible amongst all of this nether foliage. Oh, <laughs> this is where we made the scumpus from our last episode. So, in fact, this is actually leading straight back through to the other portal that we made towards the jungle. That's convenient. Now, let's see if from here we can find a way down to one of those large, expansive lava lakes like the one we saw by the nether fortress. Well, I can see a couple of quick ways down, but I'm not really interested in taking those. <laughs> yeah, this is close closer to what I was looking for, and thankfully we have a relatively safe passage down here. We can build ourselves a little staircase so that we can drop down without taking too much fall damage, and we find ourselves at the edge of a pretty expansive lava lake. Now as we clear out the area around here, this is going to depend a little bit more on luck as well, but spawning down here in this lava lake, let's cover up those magma blocks and ga gather a couple while we're at it, Spawning down here in the lava lake, we might occasionally find some friendly creatures that can help us cross the lava if we have 
the right equipment. Now, unfortunately, I'm not seeing too many of them right here, and it's certainly not the Hoglins over there on the opposite bank. So I'm going to explore around the perimeter of this lava lake and see if we can get any to spawn. Oh, there we go, finally! Having faced off against a couple of pretty hefty hoglins, I came down to the other side of the lava lake and out there in the distance, I can see what I was looking for. These are striders, the transport solution for the nether. Because, of course, boats are made out of wood, and you can't make boats out of the fireproof nether wood. Boats are pretty much doomed in lava. You cannot sail across a lava lake. Your goose would be cooked pretty quickly. And so, striders are the solution to that. These are little creatures which love lava and can be saddled up to be ridden across lava lakes. And in the early game, when you're searching for nether fortresses, I honestly find them the best possible solution to the problem of not being able to find a nether fortress. Unfortunately for me, this strider is out here in the lava lake, so we're going to have to bridge out to find him unless he comes a little bit closer naturally. But they tend to stay pretty far out in the middle of lava lakes a lot of the time. So we're going to craft up a fishing rod and we're going to attach a warped fungus to the fishing rod to create a warped fungus on a stick. And this, in combination with the saddle that we got from the nether fortress earlier, will allow us to saddle up and ride this strider across the lava lakes. So let's very carefully, holding down shift because our life literally does depend on it, bridge out towards this strider. And once we get within range, I'm going to switch this warped fungus on a stick to my offhand so that I'm always holding it out. And that way, when the strider smells the warped fungus, it'll come over and will hopefully allow us to ride it. I think you need to be within about eight blocks of a strider for it to notice you, so unfortunately we're a little outside of that radius right now, but I'm going to try to use some netherrack to get a little bit closer, and of course he's walking even further away from me at this point. Come on, buddy, over this way, over this way, and once he starts looking at us, there we go, we've got his attention now. Okay, I'm going to back off a little way so that I can be standing on the cobblestone and be a little bit more assured that we're safe. There we go, perfect. Now all we need to do is hold the saddle in our main hand, right click on the strider and that will equip the saddle on him and then we can right click on the strider and with the warped fungus on a stick in our offhand, we are ready to go. So as you can see right now, we are traversing a lava lake very safely. The most important thing is that you do not press shift at any point because shift will dismount you from anything you're riding and that includes this strider so we have to be very very careful i've actually got my hands off the keyboard right now and i'm just using the mouse to maneuver us in whatever direction i want to travel if we right click we can giddy up the strider a little way and we'll get the this boat has legs advancement for riding a strider using a warped fungus and this way we can explore the lava lakes out here in the nether. I find this a really effective way of looking for structures and other biomes in the nether. We are already walking into the slightly dangerous environment of a soul sand valley, but it's good to know that this is here and we can probably take the coordinates of this so that we know where it is for future exploration. This would also be a great opportunity to gather some more soul sand if we wanted to expand our nether wart farm, of course. But as we wander back in this direction, you'll see the fog in the surroundings changes from this eerie blue to a slightly more comforting red as we get back into the crimson forest. And we can use the strider to just explore around the lava lakes, look around a little bit, and see if we find the legs of any nether fortresses coming downwards into the lava. In fact, in general, it seems like we got pretty unlucky here because this lava lake is relatively shallow. I'm going to swap the warped fungus back into my offhand, and as we get up to this, I'm going to stop. And the, the strider is potentially going to start pathfinding around a little bit, so I need to be a little bit wary of this overhang as I break out the blocks, but it looks like yes this does connect to another shallow lava lake on this side and hopefully this would lead out into a few other directions. Yeah it looks like this wanders over this way. You'll notice as the strider gets up on land they actually shiver a little bit, they get cold and they won't walk as fast. So being in the lava is really their native environment and where they feel most comfortable. But as you can see we can stride around here in the lava lakes and this is a really great way of looking for structures since you're covering a lot of ground and you don't have the obstructions of all of these trees and stuff generating from the surrounding biomes. It looks like this soul sand valley here might have a bit of an overhang that we can dig out into. Let's try and stay a little bit clear of the blocks here and equip our warp fungus on a stick again and we're off. Okay, so this will hopefully get us through here and 
into what seems to be a basalt delta. Very cool. Okay, well, very hot, actually, but never mind. The basalt delta will have a lot of lava in it as part of the natural generation, so the lava lake here is potentially a little bit more expansive. We can weave our way through these columns of basalt. We just need to make sure that we look up every so often so that we end up spotting any magma cubes that might jump down and try to attack us. But the important thing is not to panic. The strider won't throw you off or anything. The only time you get off the strider is if you end up holding shift. So make sure you don't tap the shift key. And this basalt delta is huge. I'm going to press F3 and take the coordinates of that as well once again so we know which direction we were traveling. And that is most of the biomes already found. If we can find a nether wastes and a warped forest, then we will have covered every biome that it's possible to find here in the nether. But the most important thing, I think, is to remember the direction you came from or take coordinates of the place you need to get back to because, of course, the Nether is a foggy place and it can be quite difficult navigating around areas like this if you don't know which way you're going. So this is a time to rely on coordinates or potentially just remember which way you came back. Leave a trail if you can, but if you're on a strider, you're going to be exploring pretty fast, so it's a little bit difficult to navigate around here if you don't know where you're going. The good news is your warped fungus on a stick will only lose durability if you right click with it to tell the strider to speed up. If you're just walking around at normal strider walking pace, the durability of the warped fungus will never decay and so it's important to remember that when you're striding around here because you don't want to stay stranded in the middle of a lava lake. However, if you carry another warped fungus with you, which I've forgotten to do in this case, but I'm sure we'll be able to pick one up maybe from the crimson forest over here if we needed to, when the warped fungus on a stick runs out of durability, the fishing rod itself does not break, only the warped fungus. So you can actually just recraft the warped fungus on a stick if you brought another warped fungus with you because you get the fishing rod back. So it's a good idea to bring a warped fungus with you as a fail safe and then you can keep riding your strider for as long as you need. Well, I'm surprised that it's taken us this long, but at last we have found another structure out here in the lava lake, and that is a piglin bastion. As you can see, a very different looking structure from the nether fortress, all made out of this black stone material and basalt. These are in a lot worse repair than the nether fortresses are. They are very crumbling structures, and we're not going to investigate this one today because there is a chance piglin brutes are wandering around inside of here, and I'm not quite ready to deal with them quite yet. But the point of this is really just to let you know that striders are some of the best ways to navigate in the nether if you're looking for generated structures like nether fortresses and bastions, because so often there will be warning signs of those in and around lava lakes like this, and it's simply a clearer environment for you to explore and find those structures. If we continued to explore this lava lake, I'm sure that we would find a nether fortress one way or another. But I think at this point I'm running a little bit low on time for this episode, so I'm going to do my best to navigate back through the basalt delta underneath that soul sand valley overhang and return to the crimson forest where we picked up the strider in the first place. And from there, hopefully, we should be able to find our way home. And finally, we've made it back to our bizarre cobblestone platform <laughs> that we used to find this strider originally. So we're just going to wander up to the Crimson Forest here right on the edge and we're going to now and only now press shift and that's going to dismount us from the strider who's just going to happily wander away into the lava lake once we take the warped fungus on a stick out of our inventory. If you want to you could build a little corral for him, you could corral him in just to make sure that you could return to this strider if you wanted to explore the lava lake in future. But for now, I'm just going to give this little guy a warped fungus to say thank you. Feeding two striders warped fungus will get them in the mood to breed, but honestly, I just like feeding the little guys and seeing the heart particles because they do such a good job of ferrying us around the lava lakes. One last tip to keep in mind whether you're exploring the nether on foot or by strider is to keep an eye on your coordinates. And if you have created your nether portal relatively close to the spawn point in your world, then you can do a little bit of quick maths to figure out where that portal is in the nether, even if you haven't left yourself many landmarks or bridges to go by on your way home.
Did those XP orbs just play happy birthday? <laughs> Alternatively, assuming you've built your portal close to the world spawn point, the world spawn point is more typically closer to the very center of the world at zero, zero. And so if I open my coordinates right now, we're only about 25 blocks off from zero, zero, meaning that if I ended up coming back to the zero, zero coordinate, I would end up being roughly around here, which was roughly the area that I tunneled through the netherrack. So it's actually worth noting that if you get lost in the nether, just head towards the center of the world, and more often than not, along the way you'll find a hint about where your nether portal is to return to the overworld. And yes, because our portal was in a crimson forest, yet more piglins have turned to zombies in the overworld. Well, that was a pretty successful trip, I think. We got a nether fortress covered, we rode a strider, we've done all sorts of stuff in this episode, and it feels like we're making really good headway into the nether. Still no warped forest, though, so maybe we'll have to go back and look for a warped forest in future. For now, though, that's going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixorifs. Please don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.